Today we are here to discuss about how a privilege access management can provide you extra layer of security in terms of your network and uh, in terms of your internet and the whole cloud itself. So it's Pradeep Pachani here. Uh, so I've been working in in security domain from last five years. I have expertise in IM and PAM world. Uh, I'm a part-time musician and full-time cybersecurity expert, you can say. So today's agenda is like to go through these points, which is basically what is a privileged account, why people are talking about it, uh, what is the risk associated with those accounts, and how a PAM solution can mitigate that risk. We'll also go through some features which are quite critical to a PAM solution. We'll also go through the architecture and the integration we do provide. And we'll also discuss why exactly the PAM will solve all your problems. So the first thing is, what is a privileged account? Can anyone answer it for me? I want to make it interactive. Because neen sabko aariye, sabne khana khaya. Okay, yes please. Yes, so a user who is having more access than the usual user, that is a privileged user. So for example, in your organizations, if we talk about laptop, so there are some admin users. So they are privileged users. In some cases, in the case of Linux devices, they are root users. In databases, they are root users as well. So all the users who have more access than the usual users, they are the privileged users. And because they have more access, they are the one which are most vulnerable as well. Why exactly they are vulnerable? In case if I'm a hacker and I want to hack your organization, if I want to get into your infrastructure, so in that case, definitely for sure, I wanted something which is concrete, which basically will give me more access. So because they have the more access or they are the one which, is, which can control the whole infrastructures, so because of that, they are the one which are most vulnerable as well. Um, there are some stats uh, from different references about what exactly the problem they do associate. So all the attacks around the world, 80% of them or 81% of them are because of some privileged user credentials. So because you are sharing those credentials with your other users. So for example, if I am the IT admin, I am sharing the SSH files or I am sharing the username and password with you guys and you are sharing it further. So in that case, it uh, associate and risk with it. And 80% of breaches are because of that. Uh, it also inco include the identity theft and other things. And most of the data and other things are associated with those accounts. What exactly a PAM solution is? So PAM is a technology or you can say software which is sitting in between your user and your applications or your resources. What I mean by resources, so for example, in case if you are having some RDP machines, the Linux machines, databases, or some cloud application or some endpoints, and you want to protect them. So PAM solution will be sitting in between your user and those resources. So your user will be coming to PAM for accessing anything. So that's a like default application or default definition of PAM. Um, we'll go through some features and functionalities which PAM does cover. So for example, a privilege session management. So what exactly is privilege session management? To controlling or basically seeing all the session or recording every activity a user is performing with those credentials. Abhi kya hota hai ki if we are having some access, whatever we are doing, nobody is tracking it. So we will be tracking each and every activity. Once we do capture it, like what exactly a particular user is performing, we can also mitigate the risk. So I'll just show you a quick demo of how the solution does work and how exactly the user experience does look like. So this is a mini orange privilege access management solution. So over here, this is an assets tab where you can add your RDP machines, Linux machine, VNCs. So I have added a few of them. The user will always go to a tab called my assets. So user will only have access to these tabs where they have the access. So they can see the uh, resource that they have access to. They can just click on the access button. Because PAM is containing all your passwords in its vault itself, so the user do not have to enter any sort of credential. So as you can see over here, 
I have logged into an Ubuntu machine without providing the SSH keys or the passwords. Because Pam is the middleman in between and it is doing my job for that. It is providing all the password and everything to the required machine. Whatever the activity I am performing over here, for example, if I am trying to run a particular command ls or any other commands which I can perform in any Ubuntu machine. So all those commands will be recorded as well, including my video as well. The complete thing which you can see on this screen that is being recorded. So this is what we call privilege session management. The same case applies to Windows, VNCs, uh, application, any sort of application. For example, if you are having AWS and you want to protect that as well because all the machines and everything is residing in that itself. So definitely for sure you don't want to share your AWS password with all the users. And because their DevOps teams and other people are there whom you have to give the credential, they are very essential. Like if you do not provide those credentials, you won't be able to work smoothly. So definitely for sure you want to give access to that as well. And that can only be done by using PAM in that way that you are adding everything into this itself. Let's take an example of how this recording does work. So if I go back to this session management, so there's a session management part itself. Over here you can see the real time sessions you are having or the users are having. So administrator can see which users are accessing what resources. The administrator can view those resources and terminate those resources as well. So everything is possible. Um, in terms of recorded session, once the activity is done, so they are being transferred to the recorded sessions. So if I try to activate a particular application or for example, in this particular case, I'm trying to activate Kubernetes or basically access Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes windows will be accessible to me like this. If I'm running any sort of command, I will be able to see those command on the right side section and I can see the user's activity over here. So this is what we call privilege session management. Uh, it covers all the user sessions. It records basically. You will get the real time notification as well. Because Pam is your middleman and in case if any user is trying to perform any sort of activity which is vulnerable to the company or anyone. So in that case you will get the real time notification itself. As soon as the user performs that acti activity that will be recorded and you will get the notification. You can control the access. So for example, if I don't give user to shut down command ka access. If someone is Linux server, mein login karta hai, they cannot shut down the machine. So I can also control that. Only the administrator can uh, run shutdown, the other user cannot do that. So that is the access control. Because all the time you are going through PAM, so PAM is basically making sure all the authorization is continuous. Every moment you are making sure the user is authorized or not. You will also, you can also basically behavioral analyze everything, all the events and the activities. So in case if the user is performing anything vulnerable, you will be able to analyze with the help of AI. So we have a model which basically scans everything. Let's take an example. If I am trying to download a malicious file into one RDP machine. So because PAM is scanning everything, including your sessions. So it knows that this user is trying to download this particular file. And it will scan that file if the scan if that file contains any sort of uh, malicious code or something like that or Windows itself found it out. So Pam will basically block that activity. So this is the blocking of malicious activity. Then comes the ticketing and the approval system. So let's take an example. Kisi abhi kya hota hai organization mein. If somebody wants some sort of access for a particular resource. Let's take an example. Mujhe SSH machine ka access chahiye. Koi bhi Linux machine ka. So I'll go to the DevOps team or the IT admin and give me the access. So they'll provide me the access. But it is quite manual, like every time going to them or pinging them and every time. And it is not a feasible thing that we can track everything. So for example, if I'm, I'm an IT admin, I won't know that how many users are having access to this particular machine. And there might be a possibility at some point of time I'm not available as well and somebody needs some access. So in those cases, ticketing and approval systems comes into the picture. It is the same way as you apply your application, leave application or something like that. Jahan pe aap approval ke liye hai and the admin or the jo bhi aapka manager hai, he can allow you for the leaves. The same way you can create tickets for resources. For example, if there is a database hai, and somehow I am in night shift and somehow the server is down and I want access to the database immediately. So in that case, I can create a ticket. If the admin has allowed me to get just-in-time access. What is what, what do I mean by just-in-time access? As soon as I raise the ticket, it should be automatically approved. 
Why? Because it is for some critical cases. Like in night shift, if server is down, I have to make it up in any case. And I cannot uh, rely on some other people, IT admin or something like that. In those cases, definitely for sure, it should be automatically approved. So just-in-time is a feature where it will automatically get approved. You will get it for a limited time. You will get the access for the limited period of time. You can perform whatever you want to perform. And as soon as you have performed that, your access will be gone. It allows you to give zero access. What do I mean by zero access? So if a user is getting the access after getting a ticket or after creating a ticket, definitely for sure that makes sense that the user is by default not having access. So no user will have any sort of access by default. You have to ask for the access. You can also real-time elevate the access or delegate the access. So for example, over here, there's a ticketing option. You can create a ticket, mention the reason, what exactly the reason is. In case if there is an approval system, your admin will get the notification that this user is looking for this resource. You can approve it or deny it. And they can also mention the reason, the access time, from which time to which time they want the access, and who is requesting the access. Then move over to the password vault. Uh, can anybody know, uh, do anybody know what is a password vault or what is a vault? They told me when if you use to the thing. Yes. Yes, so it's something like jahan pe apne secrets, passwords, certificates, everything is stored. Why do we want to store it at some other places? It mitigates the risk. If you have a database, mein sab kuch rakh loge, to that is not a feasible way to do anything. If you have a database hack, then everything will hack in one way. So that's why we come up with a solution which is basically handling all your passwords and everything. That is a password vault. Where you have certificates, secrets, passwords, all manage it. Uh, in PAM, because if you have seen ultimately you have to access anything. So we have to access it with the username and password because machines are ultimately protected with username and password or so certificates. So we need those passwords at any point of time. So we have a vault which integrates with the passwords part. Every password or certificates are stored over here. We have multiple el encryption algorithm where you can encrypt the password and the certificates which you are having. Um, there is a tool called HSM. That is a hardware security module, basically. So it's a hardware device where you can secrets bhi save your secrets. So for example, whatever you use encryption, there is an encryption key. Hoti hai. And that encryption key is being used for encrypting everything, whatever you are trying to store. So for example, password, the password will be encrypted. Hota hai. But you want to store that as well. You want to mitigate risk of get, that getting hacked as well. So for that, we use HSM tools like that. Um, ek aur bhi hoti hai, that is password rotation. How many people have rotated the password? Rotate ki hai, ki password expired ho chuka hai, you have to rotate it. You have to modify the password. You have to create a new one. So for that purpose, it's a very like clumsy process. Four days later, every day password expires, I have to create a new one, which is not a good process. And user ko bohut bohut aisa lagta hai, unfeasible lagta hai. So in those cases, PAM is basically, because holding all your passwords, it automatically rotates the password and certificates for you. You don't need to do it manually. Uh, as I stated earlier, so analytics and uh, blocking, so we do scan each and every activity. We have all the activities with us. And because we are scanning each and everything, we are creating some, uh, you can say, with, with some algorithm, we are capturing some events. That these events can be the one which can be the malicious. So we are analyzing those, detecting the malicious one. We also send alert and notification to the administrators. For example, night me kisi ne koi particular piece of code download kar liya, which can be vulnerable. You'll get the notification, this user has downloaded this particular software at this particular point of time which can cause issues like that and it also blocks uh, this is the basic overview of with which uh, which applications you can integrate the privilege access management so you can integrate with your rdp machines sh machines in case if you want to protect your network as well so in network you also have some routers switches firewalls which are used for different purposes. So for example, the router is being used for routing the traffic and you want to make sure the whole intranet is protected as well. And in case if you want to protect the whole intranet, in those cases you have to protect those devices as well. Usually by default, in those devices, we do AD authentication. 
or we log in with the local username and password which is not the ideal way because again you are trying to share some credential with different users of these credentials then definitely for sure those are also needs to be protected that can also be added in pam you can protect your networking devices as well with pam you can also protect your uh, mysql database oracle database or any sort of database even if it is ms sql or anything like that that can also be protected we have integration with aws and atlassian as well um, not aws atlassian only we have integration with all type of cloud applications or endpoints so what do i mean by cloud applications as i said earlier uh, kaise aws application ho sakti hai aapki jo bahut aapke liye privileged ho again they can be linkedin profile as well so for example aapki jo company ki linkedin profile hai and that will be under an account as well to usse aapki company ka pura ka pura data associated hai whatever you post on your linkedin that is also a critical thing so if some hacker have got the access to your facebook account the linkedin accounts so you also want to protect that again sharing the password is not the right way so we can host those passwords in password vault of mini orange and whenever a user requires access for a particular period of time you can give the access so all the web applications can be covered into this we also can cover desktop applications to agar aapki koi desktop applications hai aur koi aur bhi applications hai that can also be covered um i'll explain the basic architecture how exactly the whole thing does work so over here in the starting part there is an it admin or any sort of user is there this it admin or the user will communicate with the pam server how exactly they will be communicating they will be communicating with https on top of https um for because it's https we have to add some sort of authentication for different users so we have authentication for ad adds or even if your users are in your radius server saml or any other application like okta hai me okta me kahi aur bhi hain so that can also be integrated you can add a multi factor authentication layer on top of that as well uh then once they are into this server so there will be couple of servers which will be communicating with an internal database past uh, postgres or any other type of database over here further you can communicate with operating systems like maine bataya tha linux rdp vnc's endpoints it can be any sort of endpoints networking devices routers switch and all and uh, databases and cloud applications as well because as i said earlier uh, we are auditing and recording each and every activity so all the audit logs reports and everything is being generated as well we have integration with multiple uh, siem tools like for example in case if you want to view those logs at any other place that is also possible so you can store those logs at any other place and view that in data dog or something like that we have integration with ticketing system and everything in case if you want to automate the whole devops steps as well so for example uh, creating a machine allocating it to some specific user and once the allocation is done deleting that machine and everything so right now it is all manual koi devops team mein hota hai wo aapke liye sab kuch karke deta hai but with pam you can automate this part as well automatically all the machines will be created for you and once the machine use is done that machine will be deleted as well so this is basically integration with the scripts and devops so why pam can anyone answer it for me aur sab so gaye it's it's super difficult to have a session at 3 o'clock and just after the lunch as is no is the passwords it stores the password yes uh but why exactly pam is required so we got pop your tab up and hit set and lot of whatever it didn't get the application such as stuff to the deeper guys to you know manage on your rocket it says that they got to say that then what are you going to yes anyone else you got to make many of the tasks which are going to be in many of the by it or they will be yes anyone else you pam been that access when in this way one access to your world is right this will hold to what any to solve then is broken thing and then visit it out to your have a restriction for finding it definitely for definitely for sure so yeah for sure uh pam can basically do all the stuff for us including recordings including automation and everything it basically provides us a place which does the job for us with real time alertings and everything
And if we have uh, real-time alerting and everything in place, we are also compliant to many compliances. So in different countries, different compliances are there for basically making sure all the resources are protected. Your internet is protected. It allows your users to trust you as well. So because of all this stuff, PAM is quite required to any, any uh, organization. So I have a section for question and answers. I will not take much time of you guys. I guess it's quite early, but kisi ke kuch question ho, kuch answer, so to mujhe bata sakta hai. PAN uh, has limitations for it in infrastructure. It's since it access infrastructure as a service, like you say. It can create an infrastructure, it can delete it. So does it have any limitations as such? How about we use Terraform in some of the cases? wherein we can just add in how many instances that we wanted to wait in cloud. So same way, does PAM also has? No, there's no limitation. It all depends on the integration, the kind of integration the solution has. So for example, in the case of MiniOrange, we have integration with Terraforms as well. We have integration with Ansible's and your Kubernetes as well. So all the integrations are already there. When you talk about like limitation, there's no limitation even if you want to create as many as resources you want. Even if you want to create some custom policies. What do I mean by custom policies? Let's take an example. If I need to make 10 machines in one day, then I should have a notification that there are 10 machines in this team. And because I want to make sure that my AWS bill is not going to be So definitely for sure I want notification for those things as well. So definitely for sure all the customization and everything can be done very easily. It basically allows you more things apart from adding any sort of blockage or something like that. Like how plugin that we can use, let's say for Terraform plugin that we integrate with this map and that. Yes, you don't need to install any sort of plugin on any anywhere. It's it's all automated. So it's a uh, in our case, it's a agent less solution. So how exactly it benefits? You don't need to install any sort of agent on any sort of machines. Even if you want to integrate your Terraform, it basically is a middleman who can talk any language. This is RDP ki language alag hai. SSH ki language alag hai, WebEx ki language alag hai. So it's basically communicating it for you using the HTTPS layer. Anyone else? Yeah. So you can choose our code, right? So how does the PAM change this pass on and how does it just come to So if you saw it properly, the user don't require the passwords. So they don't require the password and how exactly we modify the password. Uh, so for example, if your machines are domain joined, so all your password will be in active directory. So there's a protocol called LDAP S protocol. That protocol is being used for uh, authentication and changing password in active directory. So like our PAM solution does support that protocol. So whenever there's a time to change the password, if you created a policy, कि जब भी पांच दिन हो जाए तो एक नया पासवर्ड जनरेट हो जाना चाहिए ये ये पॉलिसीज के साथ सो इट विल जनरेट ए पासवर्ड इट विल सेंड इट टू एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी विल अपडेट द पासवर्ड एंड एज सुन एज द पासवर्ड इज अपडेटेड इन एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी दैट विल बी अपडेटेड इन पैम एज वेल बट बिकॉज यूजर को कभी भी पासवर्ड डालने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ी सो यूजर डोंट इवन नो कि पासवर्ड अपडेट हो गया और आप चाहो तो हर घंटे पासवर्ड रोटेट कर सकते हो एनी अदर क्वेश्चन सब बोर हो गया लगता है चलो ठीक है फिर मैं फीडबैक डालूंगा सबसे अभी सो देर इज अ फीडबैक यू गाइस कैन पुट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ फीडबैक वट द फीडबैक यू वांट टू ऐड बस गालियां मत लिखना इफ समबडी वांट्स टू रीच आउट टू मी सो आई हैव माय ईमेल एड्रेस ओवर देयर एज वेल इफ समबडी वॉन्ट माई लिंक प्रोफाइल दैट इज ऑल्सो मैंशन सो थैंक्स एवरी